my name is Mark and welcome to my channel. Join me all year round, week in, week out, come rain or shine, and together we'll be fishing for pleasure. Good afternoon troops and welcome back to the channel. Another day, another river, and as always, we're out fishing for pleasure. <laughs> you just see me raking and cutting the swim out. It's important that you don't worry too much about disturbing. On a big river like this, obviously, it's uh, location dependent, but on a big river like this, don't be worried about chopping your swim out getting it raked, getting it just how you want it, getting and getting some baiting. I've been fishing 20 minutes, I've had half a dozen bites already on worm. I haven't hit them, but I've had bites. So it just goes to show you the small fish, but the fish have moved into that swim and they're feeding 20 minutes, half hour after I've raked it and disturbed it. So it's a bit shallower than the last swim I fished along on this river and it's, uh, it's only about eight foot deep where I am. It's uh, quite overcast, it's very warm though. And you saw me raking the swim out. I don't like to, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I like to do things a certain way. And I think they work well. When you rake and swim out, it's so silly, in my opinion, to whatever weed you've raked out, to just leave it aside where you're sitting when you're fishing. It's the middle of summer, all it's going to do is attract flies, mosquitoes, everything that bites you, annoys you, itches you, gets on your wick, that's going to attract you. And of course, not to mention the smell. <laughs> Someone has raked it a couple of weeks ago, and you could see how overgrown it was, you couldn't, you couldn't walk down to the swim. But someone had raked it, and just dumped all the, whatever, all the weed they raked, they just left them in the swim, in the ice, it's, it's rank, it does stink a bit, but you've got to put up with that. Me, I throw it over to the side, you know, I mean, I'll get, I'll get it right out of the way. I don't want loads of mosquitoes and midges and Christ knows what else biting me, bothering me, and the smell, Woo! but that's my gripe. We're out, we're fishing, I'm going to be fishing for tension bream again, but it's only three o'clock in the afternoon, I've, you know, I've got here at half one, I was fishing by half two. They don't take long. And I'm already getting bites, so, but they're small stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm quite happy to sit and wait for the big stuff. So I'm going to fish with a single grain of corn for a few hours, see if there's any roach and rudder around. You never know, Brit, bonus bream, even a bonus tench might take them. And then when it gets to about five, six o'clock in the evening, I'll sort of switch over to my uh, dendrobinas deadly on here and uh, hopefully, hopefully, touch wood, we'll have a few tench out for the cameras for you. The last session on the drain didn't go too well, we, you know, I mean it was, um, it wasn't the greatest session I've ever had, but it wasn't the worst either, you know, I mean you can always blank, but we're here, we're fishing, so it's eight foot deep, got peacock quill on, fishing six inches over depth so we're laying on a bit and hopefully 
Jaffa's tent, you'll get their heads down on those Jaffa's I threw in and start munching around. Once, once them tents and bream move into the swim, they'll go through that bait, no problem. So it's not a lot to put in at the start of a session. Don't want to put too much in, don't want to overfeed it, but we've got some bait in here. We've got some bites. Let's get some fish. Well, here's the swim. There you see that clump of reeds to the right. There's my float. I've had a few bites on corn and worm cocktail, only small stuff though at the moment. So I've got a little Cuban lunch of meat on there at the moment just to see if anything takes that sort of bait. I'm a bit restricted in the sense I normally like to have a swim that has a left and right option. I've got that clump of reed to the right of me. Ideally, the swim would have been dead opposite it, so I could fish left and right of it. So basically, yeah, that's my swim. You can see a bank, bank of weed to my left. So it's just that bit that's opened up and raked out. There's some floating weed out there. I can see it on the surface, I don't know if you can. Just on the surface there, so it's not moving though, the, width, the gentle breeze has not moved it. So I don't know how deep or far down that goes. I have to watch that. Do I have any decent fish heading that way once I hook them? But it's a beautiful afternoon. The reason I've not put worm and cocktail back on, even though I'm getting bites, is I don't want small perch and small roach and rudd to rip all my worms to pieces. I want to save them for the tench, so... As I say, at the moment I'm fishing for small, very small Cuban meat. Never fished with meat along here before. So I just put it on while I had a cup of coffee and a few uh, thick rolls. <laughs> And uh, I'll leave it on for 10 20 minutes if nothing happens, and I'll go back to corn. And periodically, I'll try the corn and worm cocktail and see if the better stamper fish have moved into the swim. Oh, I haven't spoken to her for a while, but we're quickly running out of time. It's been an absolute mare. The fish are definitely winning. What's happened here? There's a bank of weeds moved into the swim. It's floating weed but it's not on the surface it's not on the deck it's in the middle layers so every time I hook a tench they just come up into that layer of weed and bump me off I've lost three or four uh, you know I'd, it's uh, difficult I've tried changing the angle I've uh, put a little light feeder out there and see if I can fish under it and they're not getting the same bites you need a little bit of finesse with the float to get the bites and at the moment the fish are winning. <laughs> Alright and I got we started fishing at half two, three o'clock seriously. And we had a few bites early on from small stuff. I put on the big baits and uh nothing happened for a while and then half five, six o'clock I started getting me bites and it's been solid I've getting a bite a chuck and I just can't hit them at the moment. The river's running off. I can't re-rake re -rake the swim, otherwise I'll rake all my bait out. So it's a case of um, hoping that weed just shifts out enough and I can land a few. Let's crack on before it gets dark. Well, you can still see me just about. First fish of the session. <laughs> Seven pan ten bream. We'll show you it in a second. And that's a little bit better, isn't it, troops? Let's get this bream ready for the camera. Beautiful bite. Lovely great big slab. I don't call them dustbin lids for nothing. 
seven pound ten. We're off and running. Lovely chappy. Yes. Well, good morning troops, another glorious morning. And the old tents are very frustrating. <laughs> well, so far we've had one bream, seven pound 10, and that is it. Last, yesterday evening, I had a few tench on, but they bumped me this morning. Just can't hit them. You know, you're getting plenty of liners, the floats moving around, when it goes, you, <laughs> you know, you're striking into nothing, so it's a, Gonna have to uh, really work hard this morning. Try and winkle out some of these uh, these tench before it gets too bright and sunny. It's going to be a very bright, very sunny day. I've only got till ten, really nine, ten o'clock. So I've got four hours, five hours to make it pay. Let's crack on. <laughs> we can't waste our time talking. We've got to do some fishing. Well, we've got another, we've got ourselves another seven pounder, seven pound two. Not tench, <laughs> another slab. Glorious bream out of this river, they really are. Most of his tail's missing. The old otters have been around. Ooh, let's get it back. Well, troops. Didn't set the world alight, but we got our waist sling and landing it wet. That's the main thing. Yeah, it was never on, really. I got here at half two, three o'clock. It started running the river off at four, and it's been running solid since. It's not conducive to getting the big fish holding in one area and feeding, sadly. But... We gave it our best shot and we still winkled out a couple of seven pounders so you know it ain't been a total disaster but it's <laughs> it's half nine blue skies glorious sunshine little fish have moved in that's the session done there's no more big fish to be had not till this evening anyway thanks for watching troops really do appreciate it and i'll see you on the bank real soon